Let's take a deeper look into each organ. And the first organ that we'll tackle is the adrenals. And so the adrenal glands are actually made out of two parts, the outer layer, which is the adrenal cortex, and the inner layer, which is the adrenal medulla. And the adrenals are really a wonderful organ. It produces many, many hormones, such as cortisol, DHEA, testosterone, progesterone, estrogen, and pregnenolone. Out of, um, those are some of the organs that uh, the adrenals produce. So Dr. Lam, uh, tell us about cortisol first. Well, uh, cortisol is the, the main anti-stress hormone that the body has. It's the main weapon, okay? And cortisol is also a miracle hormone, <clears throat> excuse me, because it does so many things. It is anti-inflammatory, it helps sugar balance, it helps the body to produce more sugar when you need it in time of stress. It is able to put on the braking mechanism when you are overstressed. At the same time, it helps you with the energy that you need. And the problem with cortisol is that it is so universally useful that when it fails, then you have a big universal problem. It's like you have a big benefit and you also have a big weakness. And this is one of the key problems with cortisol imbalances. Now, we're not talking about medical conditions such as Addison's disease, where the body intrinsically has the in improper production of cortisol. We're talking about, you know, everything is fine, the body is working well, you know, but somehow the cortisol output, it does not match the body's need at every point in time, whether it's chronic stress or acute stress. But so when that happens, that's when the problem begins. Of course, you know, like many hormones uh, in the body, there's feedback loops involved. And normally these feedback loops are automatic. You don't have to touch it and you don't want to touch it, you see what I'm saying? And that's why sometimes we don't want people to just try, try to manipulate uh, too many hormones because it's like a moving target 24 seven. The body has the ability to self-regulate. It's built in, but you have to let the body do the job. You cannot manipulate too much. That's why patching symptoms, where it's too high, too low, you don't want to do too much of that. You must give the body the tools for it to kind of repair itself. And cortisol is one of the most important uh, key uh, anti-stress hormone in the body, okay? Yeah. And so Dr. Carey, why don't you actually tell us about what are some of the signs and symptoms if you have too much cortisol in your body? So signs of high cortisol uh, can be in the early stages of adrenal fatigue when your body is really trying to push very hard to create cortisol to match the demand of your stress. And so what you might be seeing are like high levels of sugars or um, obesity starting to creep up. Your muscles might feel a little weaker. You might have some increased insulin resistance and higher blood pressure, even lower potassium levels and, and increased body hair. And those are some of the signs of high cortisol. Why don't you tell us about the signs of low cortisol, Dr. Jeremy? Yeah, and so like Dr. Lam said before, when adrenal fatigue advances, the cortisol level can't really match the amount of stress that your body is going through. So then you might get some signs such as uh, low trending glucose levels and blood sugar. You might have a low level of sodium. Uh, you find yourself having more fatigue. You might have a low trending blood pressure as well. You could find that your appetite is actually decreasing and then you might actually be hitting a, a point where you might actually be getting weight loss and then also feeling your muscles just being quite weak. Yeah, you remember, a cortisol output during the stress response is a continuum. It's not absolute. It's not like a light switch you turn on and turn off. As the body needs more, it goes up. But as the body needs less, it also goes down. It's dynamic. In adrenal fatigue, what you have is in the early stages, the cortisol rise and you have those symptoms. But interestingly, as the body kind of burns itself out, so to say, at the adrenal fatigue level, then you start having an opposite set of reactions. That's why people get very confused. Well, sometimes I have salt craving, sometimes I have sugar craving, sometimes I feel great, sometimes I feel terrible. And this can happen like a yo-yo throughout the day, or it could be happening throughout a, a long period of time, depending on the stresses. Of course, in particular, you know, uh, aldosterone 
is one that is a lot of people complain of, uh, somewhat of a low type pressure. They feel a little lightheaded when they stand up. They feel breathless when they go up the steps. You know, and, and a large part of it has to do with aldosterone, which is a salt regulating hormone, which is also in addition to cortisol, uh, made and then regulated in the adrenal glands. Of course, you know, signs of low aldosterone is very, very common, but sometimes they are so subtle that you don't really see that, you know, hitting you between the eyes, so to say. It's like whispers. So what they, they can include muscle uh, twitches, um, as, uh, confusion, uh, fatigue, a little nauseated. You know, you can even have some heart palpitations, you know, with irregular heart rate, you know, and then because you, you have less ability to regulate electrolytes, sodium, potassium becomes off, even though the lab can show up normal.